hello there. So in the past, um, I've seen posts on Reddit and I've had people ask me about Space Desk and how that works with uh, different devices. And I've actually never heard or worked with Space Desk until folks mentioned it. So based on that, I went ahead and kind of played around with it, particularly with the Big Me uh, Ink Note Color Plus, as well as the books Tab Ultra C. And actually, um, it works pretty well. So I thought I would do a little video, kind of show how that thing performs, how you can set it up, and we'll kind of go from there. So let's take a look. Okay, so in order to use Space Desk, there's two things that need to happen. And the first is it has to be installed onto your computer, and then you have to install the app on your uh, Android device that has the access to the Google Play Store. So uh, here on the screen, we're in the web browser, and you're going to spacedesk.net, and it takes you here. Um, the Space Desk application is free. It's uh, from this company, Detronic Soft, which I believe is a German company. And I'm not sure how you know this fits in with our overall business. It, it kind of feels like it's it's a software package that they release because it's probably easy for them to do, relatively speaking, and it helps uh, as a gateway to some other other services. But for, for folks like most of the people watching the video, it's just this free product that, that works pretty well that these guys offer. Um, I did download the file. I do worry sometimes when someone's giving me something for free and what's in it for them. But Norton did scan the file and it was perfectly fine and I've had no issues. So it seems like it's safe as far as I can tell. So yeah, you download um, first here. Now, two couple things that may come up as an issue with the, the computer as well. And by the way, I'm running Windows 11 in this case. The, the first thing is that you've got to make sure that your video drivers are up to date. So that's important. Uh, mine were, so I didn't have any issues there. And then the secondary issue is you might have issues if you have a firewall. Um, and actually I have Norton. Um, performing a firewall. But as it turns out, um, it actually it was not a barrier. I didn't need to list it as an exclusion for the firewall. So it, it works smoothly for me, but I just wanted to highlight that those are a couple things that potentially could be barriers or things you have to work through um, when you're installing this application and trying to connect from a computer to a device. But um, I did not encounter any problems. I installed it, it was fairly easy. And then the next step was I installed the app, which is here. And so this is on the Google Play Store. It's Space Desk Display Monitor. There's Datatronic Soft, and I've already installed it. And you can see for a lot of reviews, it's, it's fairly highly rated. So um, not, not a particularly new technology. I guess this has been around for a while. I, I just didn't know about it. So anyway, you installed on your computer, you installed on your device, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and see it in action. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my device here. I'll activate it like so, and you can see I've got the app there. And I also have a little bit of front lighting on, so hopefully that helps to see the device. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my keyboard, which is connected to the device via Bluetooth. And that'll be irrelevant later. It's not important to the process. It's just the way I've set it up for this demo. Let's go ahead and click on this app. So I don't need to do anything on my computer at this time. So uh, other than be on. And of course, we're on the same Wi-Fi network as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Space Desk. Here it is. I've already got it set up. It has this uh, message, which... Um, um, kind of explains you know that you what you need to do to get it to work i don't need to actually see this again because i'm in good shape and we'll go ahead and uh, click on this connection to my corsair there we go okay so now i'm connected now um once you connect you probably want to tweak it a little bit in windows so i'm going to go ahead and go into the Windows setting, go under display, and then you can see here I can actually decide where I want this secondary screen to be in relation to the primary screen. So in this case, I have it down below. So if my cursor goes down to the bottom, see it continues 
there. I could also just as easily have it on the sides or on top, and, and you can actually even position it, you know, anywhere you want. So I can position it there. So if I go down here, there's my cursor. I go all the way to the side and then I go up. That's where the cursor appears. So you can adjust its placement. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and just put this in the center. And we are good to go. Now, um, what might you want to do now that you've got this secondary screen? And that's really kind of up to your imagination. Um, I'll just give, you know, a couple of simple, not necessarily things that people would want to do, but just to give an idea of how this works. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, let's go ahead and bring up a calculator. Oops. Okay, and I'm going to go down here to the secondary screen and just kind of maximize it there. That didn't quite work. Let's see. There we go. And so now I've got a calculator. So if I'm doing something on the computer, I can go ahead and uh, I can use the touch controls. Where's my equal? There we go. Like so. I could also, of course, use this Bluetooth connected keyboard, which is connected to this device. So let's see how this works. Seven times two. Right. So in other words, I can be doing whatever I want up here, and then I can have a tool that I'm using simultaneously down here. So we'll just be right. So I've got my browser up above, and I've got the secondary screen down below. And of course, I could move things between the screens accordingly. So for example, one thing that um, sometimes I write as a hobby, uh, it's been a while because I've been focusing on these videos, but um, what could be a nice application is while I'm writing, maybe I want to have a dictionary um, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want, I want my main screen to be my canvas, for lack of a better phrase, and I, I'll put my tools down below. So we'll just see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And I'm going to do a web browser. Let's see. We'll just we'll just do this. Bring this down like so. Connect it there. Try to get it to It's not quite how I want it. It's just a little bit tricky. You've got to let me hold on to this. There we go. Okay. So now it fits nicely on the entire screen. And I have a, a, a site that I use. Where is that? There it is. Okay, so now I've got my one look. So if I wanted to, and if I wanted to bring Word up above, I'll go ahead and do that. Just do a blank. All right, so I've got my main keyboard. Like so, and then I want to look. Oh, what's what's another instead of typing? I can look for other potential words. Right, and there's some options for me. And if I really wanted to uh, use one of these, I can bring. Where's my cursor? I can bring it down. And go. Uh, Where they say transcribing. I like that. Whoops. <laughs> Don't like the formatting there. But you see, this is obviously, there we go, not, not a great example, but it's a simple example to explain how you could have the two screens working in concert where I'm, I'm not just having a screen below with information because theoretically i mean i could do that without having a shared screen but then i can actually cut and paste and move information from one screen to the other so that was kind of the point of that demonstration and you know there's probably a lot of other things and, and creative ideas people have in working with a secondary screen 
you know, in my case, I have a very large curved screen, and so the idea of adding another screen makes a little bit less sense. But if you had a smaller monitor, then it might make a lot more sense to have a, a secondary monitor down below. You know, things that I might might split to the left and the right. Maybe instead of doing that, I've got my smaller screen and this screen instead. And that's an example of using that. Uh, as I noted, it works with uh, any uh, tab, uh, tablet that can uh, play Google Store apps. And we see it works perfectly well here. Um, the performance on this device compared to say um, the Books Tab Ultra C, it's really, I, I really can't discern any differences. Let's see if I can, where's my cursor? There we go. So right now you can just see how smooth the cursor is. We'll move it up and down. Get the pointer. You can see how smooth that is. When you go, let's go ahead and minimize this screen. When you go down into the e-ink, it's a little choppier. Um, and you can uh, improve that based on your e-ink settings. So I'm in extreme mode. That's a, I, I found that to be probably the best mode. And so it's not bad, but it is a little choppier. So I'm going to go left to right on here. You can see it, it skip, seems to skip around a bit, where if I'm here on the LCD screen, it's a much smoother experience. But outside of that kind of functional issue, um, it's it does work really well. Let's actually... Just for fun, let's open up uh, Chrome, and then we'll look at a YouTube video. Okay, now it's going up here. I'm going to bring it down like so, and if and I've got this bar up here. So if I click on that bar, that's what oh, I missed it. Actually, it's, it no, it worked. So it, it, this is what allows it to fill the entire screen. Now what's interesting here, and I'll go ahead and go into YouTube, is that I have now a couple options in terms of uh, where the audio comes out. So by default, the audio will go to whatever the computer's audio is, but there's this little uh, bar over here, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's there it is, and so if you click on that, uh, not only you can disconnect, you can use your own keyboard. I've already uh, have the, the Bluetooth keyboard connected, but if I didn't have this, I could bring up a keyboard on the screen. And then I can choose for the audio to come out of this device like so. So if I play this video. Hey, so today's makeup and movie Monday, my favorite day of the week. <laughs> today's movie was requested. See, the audio is coming from viewers. this and device. Tell by the Let's title we're doing Coyote. Pause that, good. We'll click on what you're looking at. Whoops, depending. I clicked the wrong thing. There we go. If I click that off and start playing. Not on who you ask is either a so revolution for the internet and in countless there. industries as we know it. Like in all seriousness, I compare it to the internet. So that in a nutshell is basically how this works. When I'm ready to disconnect, I can just go here and say uh, disconnect. And this is okay. And now these two screens uh, are not related to each other at all. Um, so that's basically, in a nutshell, works pretty well. Um, the only thing that I can't really comment on that I didn't really look deeply into is, you know, battery drain. And obviously, um, that's going to depend on how much front lighting you're using on this device. It's going to depend on what type of activity you're doing, you know, if you're playing a lot of video and audio or if, if it's mainly a static screen, right, that's gonna vary. I mean, presumably while you're using this, you can you can charge it by connecting the USB-C cable, which I've not done in this particular case. Um, but that's just something to, to keep in mind, but it's perfectly functional. And the one thing is we're using this demonstration with e-ink screens, um, but you can actually use uh, Android tablets as well, and it performs um, just as well. In fact, it might be a little bit smoother because they're using LCD screens as opposed to an e-ink screen. But, but the point being, as it relates to e-ink, is that these devices, the Books and the Big Me, work equally well with Space Desk, and it's kind of cool. So I just wanted to share that, and if you have any questions, leave those in the comments. 
Uh, if not, I've got links to where you can get both the Android app as well as the desktop app. And, um, you know, enjoy. All right, until next time.